dear students welcome to our youtube channel vidya for success in this video let us study regarding the division of kingdom animalia into number of uh, phylum and also here we discuss about the characteristic feature of one of the phylum that is porifera yes now we have classification of animalia based on common fundamental features so we know kingdom animalia consist of animals so these animals are divided under different phylum based on certain fundamental character so we have seen those fundamental features that means the uh, levels of organization symmetry phylum so all these are nothing but the common fundamental features so based on uh, these fundamental features they are divided into number of different phylum so here we have a table so this table tells us how actually the animals are divided under different phylum based on common fundamental features so in the animalia kingdom all animals are actually multicellular that means their body made out of multiple number of cells so different animals are showing different levels of organization different kinds of symmetry and uh, different uh, body cavity so based on these few fundamental features now we are uh, seeing how the animals are actually divided under number of phylum so first let us have a look into the levels of organization so one of the level of organization we have here is cellular level of organization so the animals uh, showing cellular level of organization they are placed under the phylum porifera so porifera is the phylum where we can see the animals their body showing cellular level of organization and here uh, the animal does not consist of symmetry and body cavity clear then the second uh, phylum is coelenterate so coelenterates are showing tissue level of organization and the body symmetry here is radial symmetry and the one more uh, third phylum is tenophora so tenophora is also showing tissue level of organization then the body is showing radial symmetry that means body can be divided into um, equal halves through any of the plane passing through the central axis and coelom is absent here also so the three phylums where the coelom is absent is porifera coelenterata and tenophora coelom is completely absent here then looking into the fourth phylum that is a uh, platyhelminthes flatworm so the flatworms are showing organ or organ system level of organization their the symmetry is bilateral symmetry and the coelom is a coelo mate that means the body cavity is not present here so that they are called as a coelo mates then looking into the next phylum that is ascihelminthes here the organisms are showing organ system level of organization and the symmetry is bilateral and they consist of false coelom in their body that means uh, they are pseudo coelo mates so here you have to remember this ascihelminthes is the one phylum where we can see the presence of false coelom so that um, this phylum is example for pseudo coelo mates here we have the animals their body consists of false coelom then annelids next phylum is annelids so in the annelids um, the body level of organization is organ system so uh, you remember children from uh, the phylum annelids to till the chordates all animals are showing organ system level of organization not not from annelids from ascihelminthes to till chordate all animals are showing organ system level of organization then here in the annelids we have two coelom in their body so they are coelomates and one more thing you have to remind here is from annelids to till chordate all animals are coelomates that means their body consist of true coelom understood and next to the annelid the phylum is arthropoda next to the arthropoda mollusca next to the mollusca we have echinodermata so on the echinodermata you can see the star mark uh, here this will indicates the echinodermata members 
they are showing uh, two different kinds of symmetry in different stage of development so in one of the stage of development it is showing bilateral symmetry and in one of the stage of its development it, it is showing radial symmetry so we, we will come to know about that when we are discussing about the characteristic features of echinodermata clear and next to the echinodermata we have hemichordates and uh, hem next to the hemichordates chordates so these are the different phylum we are uh, going to study under the kingdom animalia so now you got one idea right why uh, they use the level of organization symmetry and body cavity because these are the few fundamental characters based on these characters the animals are divided under different phylum Yes, let us study the first phylum of the kingdom animalia that is phylum porifera so this phylum includes aquatic animals so all animal belong to this phylum are aquatic in their habitat that means they can be seen in water like marine water and only few members are habitat of fresh water so let us have a look into the picture here so this is one of the animal belong to the porifera phylum so you might have seen these uh, animal in some of the tv channel like uh, animal planet and the national geographic when they are focusing on the aquatic life because this is also uh, one of the aquatic organism this is uh, more look like plant because of its nature it does not move from one place to another place because of this uh, nature it is confused as a plant but it is not actually plant it is animal so this animal usually grow on the surface of rock and on the surface of uh, stone it can be seen in the bottom region of water clear so let us see the characteristic feature of uh, the organism belong to this uh, phylum so one of the characteristic is members of this phylum are commonly known as sponges so sponges is the common name what we are using for the animal belong to this category so we have seen the sponge right so when we place the sponge in water quickly it absorb water so why because the sponge consists of many pores so because of it it easily absorb water so similar structure we have in the animal belong to this category that means the sponges that means uh, the porifera members consist of small minute pores all over their body surface so because of these minute pores what we can see throughout the body surface of uh, animal they are called as sponges understood right so sponges is one of the common name what we are using for the animal belong to the porifera phylum so why we are calling them as sponges because all over their body surface they consist of minute pores for the movement of water so this is uh, what the important thing regarding the porifera that is a common name of porifera is sponges then they are generally marine that means we can see this group of animals in salt water like marine water and a uh, one more characteristic feature of porifera is they are asymmetric animals so if you look into the body uh, structure here it is uh, showing irregular body structure right it is not having any perfect shape it it grown irregularly so that the animal does not showing any symmetry so we have already discussed regarding this symmetry so if you take the sponges their body is not possible to divide into two equal halves so from any plane it is not at all possible to divide the animal into two equal half so that uh, it is a example of asymmetric animal clear so if we could able to divide it into two equal half we could have placed this animal under the um, symmetric animal but it is an animal where uh, we can't see the proper symmetry so that it is called as asymmetric animal symmetry is completely absent here then the one more character is these are multicellular primitive animals and have 
cellular level of organization so as i said in the animal kingdom all animals all group of animals are multicellular there is no unicellular animals here so this is also a multicellular animal but it is a primitive animal that means old animal in the animal kingdom because of this it is placed under the first phylum in animal kingdom and it is showing cellular level of organization that means the entire body made out of different kinds of cells for performing different functions it is not showing tissue it is not showing organ or organ system so only the body consists of number of different types of cells for performing different functions like respiration and food uh, digestion and uh, you know, formation of uh, uh, gametes so each and every function is performing by different kinds of cells here so that the level of organization shown by the members of porifera is cellular level of organization so because of this level of organization what we can see here these organisms are primitive animals that means old animals their body organization is uh, somewhat primitive type so that they are called as primitive animals sponges have water transport or canal system so this is very important thing we need to understand about sponges because sponges does not have tissue that means a particular tissue system is not present for metabolic activity and it does not consist of organs any organs and organ system so whatever the functions taking place in the animal that is depends on uh, the pores so these pores are going to form one of the system in the body that is water transport or canal system so why it is called as system because this water transport perform multiple function in the organism so entire metabolic activity in the organism is depends on the water transport so that it is called as water transport system so for understanding how actually the water transport system works first you have to understand the structure of sponges so here we have the structure of sponge so this is actually the inner structure of the sponge you can notice the minute pores all over its body surface so the outer pore you can notice here so on the body wall outer minute pores are present so these pores are get connected to the inner body cavity again the inner body cavity opens into outside through the one more uh, terminal opening clear so all these parts in the sponges represented by some of the terminologies so let us uh, see what are those terminologies water enters through minute pores on in the body wall so in the body wall what are the minute pores we are seeing these minute pores are called as ostea clear so ostea or minute pores they are present on the body wall so we can clearly notice in the diagram right so those minute pores connected with the inner central cavity region so that that central cavity region we are named as spongophyll so the all the ostea they are present in the body wall region they are connected with the inner body cavity that is spongophyll and ostea actually helps in the movement of water so from the ostea water enters into the cavity region that is spongophyll and spongophyll again opens into the one more uh, opening that is called as osculum so osculum is actually the terminal opening what we can see in the sponge you can see the arrow mark that means a dark arrow mark here so that arrow mark region is showing one of the opening that is called as osculum so osculum is the terminal opening so from where again the water moves outside of the body clear so this is how actually the movement of water takes place in and out of the body so from ostea water enters into the cavity region that means towards the spongophyll region and from the spongophyll region again water moves out through 
osculum. So this is very easy to understand. Clear? So ostia helps in the movement of water into the cavity region. Cavity region we are know, named as what? Spongocele. And from the spongocele again water moves outside through osculum. So only three th terminologies we have seen here. Clear? So this kind of movement of water is called as water transport or canal system. Clear? So this canal system that means water transport system perform multiple function in the sponges. What are those function? So this pathway of water transport helps in food gathering. So it is an aquatic animal and moreover it is not showing any movement like aquatic other aquatic animals like fishes. Clear? So that uh, whenever it is uh, taking the water inside, simultaneously it will gather the food. Clear? So that food gathering is takes place by water transport system. That means that helps in the food gathering as well as it helps in respiratory exchange. That means uh, oxygen required for the uh, metabolic activity of organism is also get enters in with the water transport system and one more function performing by this system is a removal of waste so after digestion uh, some of the waste material will be get releases so those waste waste material will moves out of the body with the help of the same transport system so that continuous movement of water in and out of the body perform all this function in the organism. Understood right? So when the water enters in through the ostia, it helps in the food gathering, respiratory exchange and when the water moves out through the osculum, it simultaneously helps in the removal of waste from the body. So because of this, the water transport uh, this thing what we are seeing in the animal is called as water transport system or canal system. That means it is performing multiple function in the sponge. Understood right? Since the sponges are showing cellular level of organization, their body consists of different types of cells for performing functions. So one such cell what we can find here is coanocytes. So these cells are also called as collar cells. So where do we find these cells? So in this spondocil region, we can find some of the parrot green color cells in this diagram. So those cells are actually collar cells or coanocytes. So these collar cells are present just behind the flagellated cells. So let us see how the flagellated cells perform function and what is the function of collar cell. So flagellated cells, they consist of flagella. So the movement of flagella will give proper direction for the movement of water in the spongocil region. So we know spongocil is the cavity region in the sponge. So in this region actually the water will be present. So the water movement takes place in the proper way by the direction given by flagella. So flagellated cells will give proper direction for the movement of water. And just behind the flagellated cells, we have collar cells or coanocytes. So these cells absorb food material from the water. Understood? So uh, the food is present in the water that is actually get captured with the help of collar cells. So this is for the main function what we can see in the collar cell. Then after catching the food, it send that food material towards the amoeboid cells. So where do we find amoeboid cells? So amoeboid cells are present just behind the collar cells. So they are irregular in their shape because of their characteristic shape they are named as amoeboid cells. So what is the function of amoeboid cells? So amoeboid cells helps in distribution of food to different part of the body. Clear? So there are uh, two functions we have to understand here. The collar cells, they line spongocil region. Actual function of the collar cell is it helps in capturing of food. That means it absorbs food in the water present in the spongocil region. 
and it uh, send food material towards the amoeboid cells amoeboid cells helps in distribution of food to different part so even though this animal lack organ or organ system only the cells perform different functions like we have seen the collar cells they ha helps in absorption of food and uh, amoeboid cells helps in distribution of food then how do the digestion takes place so digestion is actually intracellular that means it is takes place within the cell inside the cell the digestion of food takes place so the kind of digestion is intracellular digestion then body is supported by the skeleton so all the animal need support to withstand properly on the habitat so here also the sponges consist of some kind of skeleton so this skeleton is not consist of bone like us so uh, the skeleton is made out of the spicules so spicules are actually some of the structure spine like structure so these spicules give proper support to the body as well as it will give proper shape to the animal so you can make out the uh, spicule here it is labeled in the diagram so blue color uh, um, structure just behind the collar cell that is uh, nothing but spicules so what is the function of spicule so it give proper support and it is called as a skeleton because of its function then the animals are hermaphrodites so hermaphrodites are nothing but bisexual animals so what do you mean by bisexual animal so the same animal produces both the gamete male gamete as well as female gamete produces within the same animal so there is no distinction between male and female animal in the sponges so this kind of animals are called as hermaphrodites then the sponges reproduces asexually by fragmentation so because reproduction is very important process without reproduction continuation of generation does not takes place in the sponges the reproduction takes place by asexual uh, method by fragmentation so what do you mean by fragmentation fragments are nothing but pieces so the parental animal divide into number of pieces and each of the pieces they are called as fragments and these fragments develops into a new sponge so no one fragment is going to waste here so each fragment is develops into new sponges so this type of reproduction is called as fragmentation and it also reproduces by sexual method so in the asexual method as i said the same animal produces both the gamete male and female gamete and they fuse together in the animal itself so that means uh, uh, the kind of fertilization is internal fertilization means what the fusion of male and female gamete so it takes place within the animal so the type of fertilization is called as internal fertilization and development is indirect why it is called as indirect development so after the zygote formation it shows the one more stage that stage is called as larval stage so after crossing the larval stage animal develops into adult organism so when we are seeing the larval stage in the animal that is not considered as a direct development that we are calling as indirect development so say for example how we see the larvae of a frog so frog does not directly develops into adult right so before uh, going to adult stage it show one of the stage is called as larval stage so similarly the sponges also show larval stage in their development so the type of development is indirect so these are the few characteristic features what we can see in sponges then let us have a look into example of sponges one is sicon it is commonly called as a cypha so this is a picture of sicon this organism is habitat to marine water so in this diagram we could clearly make out the presence of osculum on the terminal uh, region and the next example is spongilla so spongilla is commonly called as fresh water sponge because it is habitat to fresh water this is the diagram of uh, spongilla then 
uh, one more example is use spongia the common name is bath sponge why it is called as bath sponge because of its texture so the texture of uh, use spongia is similar with that of the bath sponge what we use for scrubbing while taking bath so because of its appearance uh, like a bath sponge it is commonly known as bath sponge so this is the actual diagram of u spongia so these are the different organisms example of example for porifera